Hello friends, you are welcome. The passage we add to examine today is an interrogation. For about three good years, Jesus Christ has been educating his disciples. Now that his work has brought to an end, Jesus Christ has offered these disciples an assessment which we are going to delve deep into today on that an interesting topic which is the triumphant systematic church. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you because you are our God. We thank you because we have no any other God but thee. And we pray, we commit the scriptures. We commit the preacher. The Lord, may your Holy Spirit lead me. And may you open the heart of my brethren to be able to listen and accept the power of your word. In the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Our topic for today is the triumphant systematic church and our text is uh, Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 20. Now let us read the scriptures and hear. Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 20. It is saying, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Then Jesus, you are blessed. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has to reveal this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth, you will will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of, of the Lord. What will be the big idea of this beautiful text? The big idea of this beautiful text, which will be our main point of focus, is that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, for in him the church is built. What is the scripture saying about our topic today? The Christian community is the biggest institution on the planet today. And we cannot claim that we love Jesus without accepting and loving what he so much adores. And what is that is the church. Is the church. He adores the church. He loves the church. And that is why our topic for today is the triumphant systematic church. We all know that J Jesus has a good plan for everybody. He has a good plan for you. He has a good plan for me. That is why this topic is very important to you. And because God has plans for us, the number one plan is salvation. He wants each and everybody to be saved. He wants you and I to be saved and also to attend church attend church because the church and your salvation is very important however we shall discover various things about this church in our today's sermon and the number one thing the church redemptive confession the church redemptive confession and that is in accordance with the book of matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to, to, to 16. now what is this point telling us to gain this salvation, you must acknowledge and declare that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You cannot get a salvation of God without declaring completely that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is King, is the Lord over your life. So, Jesus posed this question to Simon, and it was a direct and personal experience with Christ. Peter Peter encounter a direct experience with God, a direct transformation, a conversation. 
with the Lord Jesus. It was a direct and individual declaration of faith in Jesus by Peter. This inner persuasion regarding Jesus, this vocal confession of Jesus, and this profound conversion are the foundations of the New Testament church. The second thing that the church triumphant include is the church jurisdictional construction in accordance with Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. Now let's, let us look at this jurisdictional construction. The church of the Messiah cannot be built with body and flesh. Sorry, with flesh and blood, because the church of Christ, it is not a structure. It is not. The church designer, constructor, is no one else than the Messiah himself. He is the designer of this church. He is the builder and the constructor of this church. So this church cannot be built on flesh and blood. Since the Lord is the one constructing this church, definitely it must finish. It must finish. The third thing is the church divine composition. According to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. The church divine composition. When we are talking about the church divine composition, we are talking about the Messiah's building of the church out of living stones. I repeat, out of living stones. Now, the question is, what are those living stones? We will understand them very soon. As the construction engineer, the Lord Jesus is laying foundation stone at the fundamental basis to construct a spiritual home. A spiritual home. Now, let me take you a little bit to understand what I mean by the living stones. Many people have said that Simon Peter is this living stone. But Simon Peter make it very clearly in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 that he is not this living stone. And he said this living stone is Jesus Christ. Peter make it clearly the living stone is Jesus, not him. Not him. According to Matthew 16, 18, what is the real great meaning for the word church? The word simply means a call out assembly. A call out assembly. That is the meaning of the church from the Greek original language. The Lord Jesus is calling out people from across the world by the Holy Spirit and by the preaching of his word. All of these stones are built upon the foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ. All those living stones. We are the stones that we have been built on Jesus as the foundation, not Peter. That is not our focus, but our focus is we are the stones to be built on Jesus. The Lord Jesus is a living stone, and we are living stones if we confess that Jesus is a Christ, the Son of the living God. As the master builder, the Lord Jesus is putting stone upon stone, building a spiritual house. Just as I said earlier, the fourth thing that involves in the triumphant systematic church is the universal commission of the church. It's time that the ultimate truth and redemption through Jesus Christ is the only key to the kingdom of heaven. It's the only key to the kingdom of heaven. According to Matthew chapter 16 verse 19, in this text from Matthew, the term key refers to knowledge. Key refers to knowledge. Key refers to knowledge. So, the ultimate truth about Jesus, the gospel truth about Jesus, that is the gospel knowledge, that is the knowledge about Jesus and the power of his redemption, it is a true key to the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Who am I according to you? Because Peter has observed the works of Jesus. Peter has walked with Jesus. They have eaten and they have dined and wine with Jesus. Now, this is a question. I've been together with you. According to you, who do you think I am? The fifth thing that involved in the triumphant systematic church is the church established conclusion. 
Mark 3, chapter 16, verse 18, the church established conclusion, and that is the conclusion that we are going to look at now. What is the conclusion that the church established? Listen to it. Number one, the term it is, is used to denote the word hell in this verse. That is in Matthew 16, 18, the word it is, is used to denote the word hell. Martyrs have perished throughout history. But our Savior will return one day, as well as the disease in Christ will resurrect first, and the forces of darkness will not triumph against the triumphant systematic church. Praise the Lord. This is a gospel truth that the church has established a conclusion that one day the Lord Jesus will come and resurrect his people. The martyrs that have died. Upon centuries and centuries, one day they will resurrect and they will meet the Lord Jesus. Jesus is coming to resurrect the martyrs, to take we that believe in him, to take us home. The question is, who is Jesus according to you? Are you part, are you the, that stone that is, that Jesus is, th that Jesus, the master builder, is building this systematic church on? Ask yourself this question. He is the foundation, and we are the souls when we confess that Jesus is the Messiah, and He is the Son, the, 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 the son of the living God. We become the living souls. We become those souls that have been built on these firm foundations that even Peter confessed about. This is a question unto you. This we are coming towards our conclusion. The church has been someone sent there and now Christ is going to come and take the belief out. This is the, this is the gospel truth about this statement. This is the gospel truth about this church. That the conclusion that the church has established is that one day the Messiah is coming to take the believers out of the planet. We have been sent to propagate the gospel, to propagate the word of God. In our conclusion, if you have been redeemed, you will adore the church of Christ. If you love him, you will be doing the following. What are those following? Number one, you will attend the church. You will attend the church of Christ, the New Testament church. Number two, protect your church. You will protect your church when you have listen to the voice of Christ, you have accepted this call to be part of the stone that will be used in building this church. Number three, pray for the church. You will pray for the church because you are believe in the church just as your master Christ believed in the church. Number four, increase the size of the church. You will increase the size of the church by recruiting, preaching, and going for missions, evangelizing those that have not accept Jesus. You will do these four things when you believe in Jesus, when you accept the call. This is what Peter said. In Christ, this is what Peter said. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter said that. Have you said that? Have you confessed? Have you had an encounter with the Lord Jesus? By the, by Ex by confessing that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, just as Peter did. The life of Peter was never the same, just as the Bible, Jesus described him as, it is a not a knowledge, it's not a carnal knowledge, but it is knowledge through the leadership and guidance of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the living God. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at this. I want to ask you this question. Are you certain that Jesus is the Messiah? Are you certain in your heart? Are you convicted that in your heart that Jesus is the Messiah? That Jesus is the living son of God? Jesus is the person who paid the price to die on the cross of Calvary with his blood shed for your salvation. Listen to me, listen, listen, listen. Are you willing to fully acknowledge that Jesus is the Messiah? I'm asking you the last question. Are you willing to accept Jesus as the Messiah? 
Today is the day to cry to Jesus if you are convicted that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. And if you believe that he is the Son of the living God, he is a, the Savior of the world, he has come to give himself in atonement for your salvation, for your sin, for you to be saved. Turn away from your sins and turn and look towards Jesus. Look at the cross of Calvary and you will see the power of the name of Jesus. What can you do? Request that he pardon your sins and that you recognize him as the Lord of your life. Thank you so much. My name is John Selfley. See you next week.